Leslie Kong, born in 1933, ran a bar and an ice cream parlor with his two brothers, as well as a record retail shop on Orange Street called Beverly's. After an encounter with a young aspiring singer from St. James, James Chambers, which we now know as Jimmy Cliff, Cliff came up with the ingenious idea to write a song called Beverly's to flatter and ingratiate himself with the store owners. Based on this single encounter, Leslie and his brothers decided they would go into the producing business with Cliff as their first artist and they called the label Beverly's Records. Leslie would become the first of the important and significant Chinese Jamaican producers and expanded his roster to include others such as Derek Morgan, Desmond Decker, and would be the first one to voice a solo Bob Marley with the single One Cup of Coffee. The ambitious Leslie Kong was also an initial investor in a company started by a former bootlegger, Chris Blackwell, Island Records, and also went on to form two other significant labels in reggae, Trojan and Pyramid. Trojan and Pyramid, both located in Britain, which was now the largest market of Jamaican music with a big Caribbean immigrant population. This connection allowed Kong to score the biggest coup in the early history of Jamaican music. Kong produced a song sung by a former welder, Desmond Dakers, which they renamed Desmond Decker, called the Israelites. The Israelites broke the glass ceiling for artists from the Caribbean region as it became a top five single on both sides of the Atlantic becoming a major hit, the first original song to hit internationally in both America and the United Kingdom. Kong, also the manager of Jimmy Cliff, was significant in producing the soundtrack for the breakout feature film, The Harder Day Come, starring Cliff and which included many other luminaries such as Toots and the Matels, Justin Hines and others. On his way to becoming an international music mogul, but this was not to be so, as in 1971, the producer at the tender age of 37 years old suddenly died of a heart attack. Joseph Hukim and the Hukim brothers. The Hukim brothers, Joseph the eldest, Ernest, Paul and Kenneth were involved in the slot machine and the jukebox business. After gambling was outlawed by the Jamaican government, they turned their attention to the music business. Under the leadership of Joseph, they built the now iconic Channel One Studios located in Maxfield Avenue. First as a four track, then expanding to 16 tracks. This time in the early 70s, along with other contemporaries such as King Tubbies, the Ukim brothers took full advantage of the new technologies of reverb and echo to create a new sound, one which would be known to the world as rockers. 
having the smarts to also have the best musicians around as session players. A band called the Revolutionaries, which includes the legendary Rhythm Twins, Smy and Robbie. Channel One became the go-to location for some of the most iconic recordings of the 1970s. Producers such as Henry Junja Laws and Bonnie Striker Lee would discover this new sound and would make Channel One their own. Recordings of early hits for Barrington Levy, John Holt, Dennis Brown and Delroy Wilson, among others. Joseph Okim, affectionately known as Jojo, would also produce one of the most significant albums of the 1970s, The Right Time, by the legendary reggae trio, The Mighty Diamonds. After Joseph's brother, Paulie, was murdered in some politically motivated violence in Kingston, they decided to migrate to the United States. But there is no denying that Joseph Hookim and the Hookim brothers with the iconic studio Channel One and the hard hitting bass heavy sound of rockers change the face of the sound of Jamaican music and expanded the audience for it. Don't go away, we're about to spotlight more players in part three.